Sacral colpopexy is a common surgical procedure used to correct prolapse of the central or top vaginal compartment. This procedure generally involves the placement of synthetic or permanent mesh to suspend the top third of the vagina to the sacrum or backbone. As discussed in the prolapse section, the top portion of the vagina can prolapse or fall in women with or without a uterus. Prolapse of the cervix and uterus through the top section of the vagina is known as uterovaginal prolapse. Prolapse of the top section of the vagina into or through the vaginal canal after a hysterectomy is known as vaginal vault prolapse. Women who have not had their uterus previously removed will typically have it removed at the time of sacral colpopexy procedure. The uterus may be removed just above the cervix in a procedure known as a supracervical hysterectomy, or it may be removed completely in a procedure known as a total hysterectomy. Ask your doctor to discuss the pros and cons of both types of hysterectomies with you. During a sacral colpopexy, one strip of mesh material is attached or sewn to the front wall of the vagina and another strip is attached to the back wall. The upper part of both strips of mesh are secured to a ligament that runs in front of the sacrum or backbone. The end result of the sacral colpopexy procedure is that the upper one-third of the vagina is lifted and suspended close to its natural position before the prolapse developed. Traditionally, a sacral colpopexy has been done through a single abdominal incision, or the open approach. This is referred to as the abdominal sacral colpopexy. This surgery has been shown to have one of the highest long-term anatomic success rates compared to other vaginal procedures used to correct pelvic organ prolapse. The success rates of this procedure to correct vaginal apex prolapse range from 78 to 100 percent. However, the abdominal sacral colpopexy has also been associated with higher complication rates and longer recovery time when compared to vaginal procedures for prolapse repair. In an attempt to reduce some of these surgical complications and the longer recovery time associated with the open approach, many surgeons have adopted the laparoscopic approach to sacral colpopexy. With the laparoscopic approach, four to five small finger width size incisions are made in the abdomen to allow the passage of surgical trocars and instruments. When compared to the open approach, the laparoscopic approach has been associated with less blood loss and shorter hospital stays, while preserving the good anatomic outcomes of the open approach. However, the laparoscopic approach requires different technical or surgical skills and often requires longer operating times than the open approach. More recently, the robotic-assisted approach to sacral colpopexy has been introduced in attempts to circumvent some of the technical challenges of the traditional laparoscopic approach. If your doctor believes the sacral colpopexy is a good option to treat your pelvic organ prolapse, ask to discuss other options as well as the optimal surgical approach given your personal preference, extent of prolapse, and his or her technical skills. In addition to the usual surgical complications, which include bleeding, infection, injury to the bladder, bowel, ureters, and nerves, the sacral colpopexy is associated with a 3 to 5 percent risk of mesh erosion. This mesh erosion rate can be higher depending on many factors, including the thickness of the vaginal walls before and after surgery, or if you're having a hysterectomy at the same time as a sacral colpopexy procedure. Other potential complications include pain with intercourse and difficulty with urination and defecation. In addition, stress urinary incontinence may be seen in as many as 40% of women who did not complain of this problem before surgery.